Hi, I'm Kristen Wilson from Index Data, and I'm going to show you how we can place a consortial resource sharing request using the ReShare software. Keep in mind that this is our alpha release, so you may see some issues, especially related to the UI, that will be fixed in future releases. I'll start the demo from ViewFind, which will be one option for a ReShare consortial search. We've set up this ViewFind instance with one of our testing partners, Millersville University. We've set up single sign-on with Millersville, so I can click Institutional Login, and because I already have an active SAML token, I'll be automatically logged in as a Millersville test user. Next, I'll perform a search. We get a set of search results that includes holdings from three libraries, Millersville, Temple, and Villanova. Each of these testing partners has contributed to a shared index of MARC records, which have been used to populate this discovery tool. I'm going to scroll down and find uh, an item that I know is held by only one library, Temple University. I can click the Get It button to place a request. I'll be prompted to enter a pickup location, a date needed by, and an optional note. Now that I've submitted the request, I'm going to switch over to Millersville's reshare tenant. Each library in, con in, a, in a consortium will have their own web-based reshare tenant, where they will manage all of re the requests their patrons place, as well as those supplied to other libraries. When I open the request app, I can see the request I put just placed at the top of the queue. When I open it up, I can see that the request has been sent to a supplier and that that supplier is Temple University. If I switch to the Details tab, I can see all of the metadata associated with the request. This includes information about the requester and supplier, the patron, the item requested, and an audit log for the request. There are a couple things here I'd like to highlight. First, thanks to our single sign-on integration, we were able to capture the campus ID of our Millersville user. We then used that ID to do an NSIP lookup against Millersville's ALMA system, validate the user, and pull in more details, including an email address and name. The Details tab also includes a catalog record, which provides a direct link between this resource sharing request and the resource requested in our shared index. The shared index has a holdings record for each library that has a copy of the item, and those libraries make up our pool of potential suppliers. In this case, we know we only had one supplier, and that was Temple University. So at this point, I'm going to flip over to Temple's reshare tenant. Here in the Supply app, I can see the same request at the top of Temple's queue. When I open this up, I'm looking at the flow view, which is where users can interact with a request. This one is ready for pull slip printing. If I flip over to the Details view, I can see in the audit trail that an auto response was sent. This means that we did a Z39.50 query to see if Temple had an available copy on the shelf at the time the request came in. They did, so this request was moved on to the next step of the process. If no copy was available, Temple would send an unfilled message and the request would move to the next available supplier. Back on the flow view, I can move through the steps of supplying this request. I can pull up a printable view of the pull slip and print it. At this point, I'd go and get a copy of the book from the shelf. Once I had the book in hand, I can scan the item barcode to check it into ReShare. I'll just use a test barcode here. In the future, we'll, we'll integrate with local ILSs to automatically perform a checkout in the local system during the check-in process as well. For now, I'll manually mark this item as checked out of the ILS. The item now has a status of ready to ship, and then I can go ahead and mark it shipped and see that it has been shipped to the requester. At this point, I'm going to switch back to Millersville's tenant. If I refresh the request here, I can see that the status has been updated for Millersville as well to tell them that the item is shipped and that it's ready to be received. This is another future integration point. Receiving the item will automatically create a temporary item in the local system and place a hold on it for the patron. For now, I'll mark it received and then bypass this local rec record creation process. Now the item is ready to circulate and any transit and circ functions will be handled by the local ILS. 
Reshare comes back into the picture once the patron has returned the item. I can scan it or click a button to mark it as returned by the patron, and this puts it into a status of awaiting return shipping. I can then go ahead and mark it return shipped. Before I ship this, I'm going to add a note to the supplier that says minor damage to cover. Notes are available whenever an action will trigger a message between the requester and the supplier. Now I'm going to switch back to the temple tenant one last time. Back in the temple tenant, I can see that the item has been returned shipped, as well as the note that Millersville has sent me. I have one last action to do, which is to check the item out of reshare. We're working on another ILS integration here, which will automatically discharge the book as part of the checkout process. And now our request is complete. As we continue to work on reshare, we'll be adding in more actions like cancellations and conditional replies, as well as more productivity tools like searches, filters, and alerts. Please visit projectreshare.org for questions and more information.